I'm Dr. April Strom. Welcome back to this video where we have another example of a related rates problem, but this time it's a balloon problem. So imagine that a balloon is released from a point that's exactly 120 feet away from an observer, and that observer is on level ground. If the balloon goes straight up in the air at a rate of 1.5 feet per second, we want to know how fast is the distance from the observer to the balloon increasing when the balloon is 40 feet high. So let's go to Desmos to explore an animation of this scenario. Okay, in looking at this Desmos animation here, we can see we've got an observer here on the left hand side who is eyeballing this balloon here at 120 feet away. Now this balloon is going to get released and when it does, it's going to go straight up in the air. So if we can animate this and actually see what happens as that balloon increases in height, what occurs is the the line between the observer and the balloon also increases. And so what we're interested in figuring out is when this balloon is at 50 feet above the ground, how fast is this green dash line changing? Of course, it's increasing, so we want to know how fast is it increasing. Okay, so let's go back to the problem and take a look at things. Okay, so let's replicate this triangle that we saw in the Desmos app, and let's just make sure that we label all the pieces accordingly. So what we saw was we had an observer here and a balloon that was rising straight up in the air vertically on this side. And we know that this distance between observer and where the balloon was launched is a static 120 feet. That quantity is not changing. But what is changing is this length here, this um, dash link between observer and the balloon. We don't know how fast that's changing. We also don't know what the actual length is. Let's just call it something. How about C? Because usually we label hypotenuses um, with a C um, as it connects to the Pythagorean theorem. Um, over here, we could call this maybe length A or B even, but because it represents a height in this scenario, let's maybe use H for height. So we have some things that are labeled here. Now, of course, this also represents a right triangle that's here. We know this is a right angle because we started that balloon here on the ground and it's going vertically straight up. So what um, comes about here is a perfectly right triangle. Okay, so back to the problem. We know that um, this particular balloon is going straight up in the air at this rate of exactly 1.5 feet per second. What we don't know is how fast this distance between observer and balloon is changing. We're gonna find that. So here's what we're given in this problem. So we are given that the balloon going straight up at a particular rate, 1.5 feet per second. Well, if we know this length here between the ground and the actual balloon is called H, we can talk about its rate of change relative to, to time being something like dH dt the derivative of the height relative to the time. And we're given that that value is exactly 1.5 feet per second. So that's a thing, a quantity that we know. All right, our goal, however, in this problem is that we need to figure out how fast the distance, as we've been talking about, from the observer to the balloon is changing. We don't know what that rate actually is. So since we called this side length C, the derivative of C relative to time would reveal to us that rate of change of that length C. So we can call that DC over DT. So how fast the side C is changing, that quantity C is changing relative to time. So with respect to time. And so we don't know what that is, but we do want to know what that rate is at precisely when the balloon is exactly 40 feet. Um, above the ground. So we'll say when h is 40 feet. So this is what we're given. dH dt is 1.5 feet per second. What our goal is, is to find dC dt 
when the h, the height is exactly 40 feet. Okay, back to the triangle. Now, what do we know about that's so special about right triangles? I mentioned a minute ago that we have the Pythagorean theorem that helps us. Um, so let's start there. We know, again, this side length is not changing. This is going to be 120 feet. Uh, we can call this side length H and this side length here of this hypotenuse as C. So in terms of the Pythagorean theorem, we would have something like this. C squared is equal to, so hypotenuse squared is equal to the this side length of 120 squared plus this side length of H squared. Okay, all because of the Pythagorean theorem that helps us with this. Okay, so what we now want to do is actually take the derivative of that equation. We want to take the derivative exactly as is so that we can figure out what our goal here is, the dc dt. Now, when we take the derivative of this equation, we need to be mindful that we're going to use implicit differentiation to do that because what we have here is an equation involving c's and h's, yet we need to find the derivative with respect to t, time. So here we go. I'm going to find the derivative um, here of this uh, equation. So on the left side, c squared, its derivative is 2c. Right? But I took the derivative of c, but with respect to time, so I need my special notation dc dt. Okay? I need that there to tell the world that I was taking the derivative of c, but with respect to time. On the right hand side, I continue on and I notice here I have 120 squared and it doesn't really matter what number that is because when I take its derivative, it's because it's a constant, I get the derivative is zero there. So it doesn't really matter much here in that, for that term. So I continue on with the next piece, h squared. I've got to take its derivative, so 2h. But again, I was taking the derivative of h with respect to time t. So this will be multiplied by dh dt. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm done finding the derivative implicitly, by the way. However, I need to be mindful of my goal in this problem is to find the dc dt. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit more algebraic manipulation of this equation. So I end up solving for dc dt, and then I can start evaluating that equation for the things that I do know. So basically what I need to do in order to get dc dt by itself, I just need to divide by 2c on both sides of this equation. And so on the left side of the equation, 2c divides out with this 2c. What remains is in fact dc dt, which is equal to on the right hand side, well, I can take care of my twos, those divide out. What remains is my h times my dh dt, the rate of change of the height respect to time, divided by just c. Okay. Now, at this point, it is safe to go ahead and plug in the values that you were given in the, in the problem. Of course, the dc dt is the part that I do not know. However, there are three quantities over here, h, c, and dh dt. Let's see what we have. We know that we wanted to find dc dt when h was exactly 40. So we know h is 40. That's taken care of. DH DT, that was given in the problem, that's 1.5 feet per second. So now I know these two quantities, but I wasn't exactly given C. However, I think I know enough about the problem to go back to my triangle and imagine and calculate what C might be just using the Pythagorean theorem. So if you go back to the triangle here, we wanted to know when H was exactly 40, and we know this side length wasn't changing, it's still gonna be 120. We can use those two values to get a static quantity value for just what C is. Again, just using the Pythagorean theorem. So here I have that back to my formula, C squared. This is scratch work here just to reveal to us what C is. C squared is gonna be equal to 120 
squared plus the 40 squared. So none of those are like rates that we are comparing and relating together. These are just quantity, the links of the sides of this triangle. And so here I end up when I solve for C, I add these two values, take the square root of both sides of the equation. I end up with C equaling the square root of 16,000, which is approximately 126.5, and let's put the units here, feet, okay? So we at least have now a value for C, and just as I talked about, we know what the dh dt value is, and we know what h is. We have all the pieces we need to go back to my problem and finish off. So I have dc dt is equal to the h, which we know from that problem is 40, multiplied by the rate at which that h is changing with respect to time. So that's 1.5 feet per second. And that will be divided now by the C value, that uh, distance between observer and the balloon, 126.5. And when I calculate here, I get approximately 0 0.474 feet per second. So what does this tell us? It tells us that when the balloon is exactly 40 feet off the ground and when the observer is going to be 120 feet away from the launch of that balloon, that the distance between that observer and the balloon is changing at a rate of 0.474 feet per second, okay? All right, I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, please go to the Advantage logo to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.